Hey guys, it's Kate with Apt, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of the eight types of DJI drones we currently sell here at Apt. These are, in order of least expensive to most expensive, the Mini 2 SE, the Mini 3, the Mini 4 Pro, the Avada 2, the FPV, the Air 3, the Mavic 3 Classic, and the Mavic 3 Pro. Now for purposes of this video, I'm going to be putting these into three categories I came up with myself. The minis, the mid-ranges, and the movies. That's a lot of M's. We're going to get into the key differences between these bad boys and figure out which works best for different needs. All right, starting off with the minis, we have the 2SE, the 3, and the 4 Pro. These are going to be your cheapest and most user-friendly options. So if you're just beginning your drone journey, these might be a good place to start. So what do they all have in common? Well, as you may have guessed by the name, the minis are pretty small. But depending on what you want out of your drones, that could be an asset. All three of these drones weigh less than 249 grams, which means if you're using them recreationally here in the US, you don't have to register them. Side note, you should really, really, really check out the rules in your area about drones before making a purchase of any of these. It might influence your decision on which one to buy, or at the very least, it'll help you to not get slapped with a fine. You're welcome. <laughs> there are a few other features all three have in common. They all have a maximum ascent speed of 5 meters per second and a horizontal speed of 16 meters per second. They also have level 5 wind resistance of 10.7 meters per second, gimbals, and very similar fields of view at about 82 to 83 degrees. There's also a ubiquitous return to home feature that will guide your drone back to you even when the battery is low or in other unideal scenarios. But even though these are all minis, they have some significant differences. For starters, the price between the three ranges from $299 for the basic Mini 2 SE to $759 for the basic Mini 4 Pro. That is a wide range, so make sure you think about what is going to work for your budget. The 4 Pro features a faster descent speed of 5 meters per second as opposed to the other's 3.5. And with both the 3 and 4 Pro, you have the option to use the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus for extended flight time. While for the 2 SE, max flight time will always be 31 minutes, the 3's increases from a normal flight time of 38 minutes to 51 with the battery extension. For the 4 Pro, it's usually 34 minutes and 45 with the extension. As for the cameras, the 3 and 4 Pro also boast a larger image sensor. Each has a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS and 48 effective megapixels. The 2SE has a 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS and 12 megapixels. Then there are a few things that naturally set the 4 Pro apart from the other two. For example, instead of a regular downward vision system like the 3 and 2SE, it has omnidirectional obstacle sensing, with four wide angle and two downward vision sensors to make sure there's no danger of collisions. It also has Advanced Pilot Assistance Systems, or APAS, that will enable automatic braking and bypassing during flight. While both the 3 and 4 Pro have 4K HDR settings, the 4 Pro can also capture slow-mo in 4K at 100 frames per second. And the 4 Pro has 10-bit D-Log-M and HLG to help with editing and provide a wide range of colors. Another thing I want to mention is the video transmission system. It's the same for the 2 SE and 3, a system called O2. The 4 Pro uses O4 video transmission, which can send FHD live feeds of 1080p at 60 frames per second and has a much faster download speed. And the F4 has an internal storage of 2 gigabytes, whereas the 3 and 2 SE have none. Now something I personally think is the coolest, you can connect both the 3 and the 4 Pro wirelessly to the LightCut app, which means you can begin to edit the footage right then and there, without downloading it. Unfortunately, this won't work for the 2 SE. So if you're looking to get a starter drone to try out flying and filming, the 2 SE would be perfect since it's super beginner friendly. If you want the simplicity of the 2 SE but with a higher quality camera and battery, you should check out the Mini 3. And if you want all of the fancy film and fixins in a powerful little package, then the Mini 4 Pro is for you. But maybe you already have drone experience, or you're looking to buy one that'll give you a real feeling of flight. That's where our next group comes in, the mid-ranges, aka the FPV and the Avada 2. Now, although only one of them has it in the name, both of these technically are FPV drones, FPV standing for first-person view. That means that both of them have headsets for you to wear, offer an immersive first-person flight experience, and require a little more expertise to control and maneuver. And any one of those things could be a pro or a con depending on what you want, so it's good to keep them in mind. At 346 grams, the FPV is bigger and heavier than the drones in the mini line. It also has a shorter flight time, maxing out at approximately 20 minutes. 
But with these compromises comes benefits like upgraded level 6 wind resistance, a higher max altitude of 6,000 meters, and a speed that can go up to 39 meters per second. And when flying in these ultra-adventurous conditions, you can rest assured your footage will come out smoothly because of the included rock-steady stabilization. These are just some of the many cool things about the FPV. Now let's move on to its filming capabilities. Bear with me. The camera's sensor is a 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS with 12 effective megapixels and features an aperture of f2.8. One of my favorite features is that the lens's field of view is 150 degrees, way wider than the Mini's 82, which really allows for that immersive feeling. It boasts an O3 low latency video transmission system for recording and transmitting 4K 60 frame per second video at up to 120 megabits per second. Hope I didn't just lose you there. <laughs> Both FPV drones can be flown in three different modes, N, S, and M. N is ideal for newer users and it features easy, more automated controls. S is sort of a hybrid mode. It simplifies controls but lets you take the reins for most functions. And M is fully manual. It allows for more freedom while flying, but it's also the hardest of the three. Fortunately, DJI has put in lots of features to help make sure your drone stays safe, like return to home, forward and downward obstacle sensing, and something called built-in automatic dependent surveillance broadcast, which will receive location info of manned aircraft in your area and send you a warning on your V2 goggles. Pretty high tech, right? So let's take a look at the other FPV drone, the Avada 2, and see what sets it apart. Right off the bat, we have new accessories for it, which will be the Goggles 3 and the RC Motion 3 for controls. Remember those three modes I just talked about? The Motion 3 only does N and S, so no manual mode unless you use an FPV remote controller. But don't worry, because with these new controls, you're going to get a seriously immersive experience. I'm talking micro OLED HD display, ultra low latency transmission, and super exciting, complete flips, rolls, and drifts, all with one push. Avada 2 has the widest field of view yet at 155 degrees and a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor with 12 effective megapixels. In case your drone gets a little too jostled, it has rock steady stabilization and horizon steady to keep the footage right side up, as well as turtle mode to flip back into takeoff position when upside down. The flight time on the Avada 2 has been significantly increased to up to 23 minutes and it's got a whopping 46 gigs of internal storage for those HD 1080p 60 frames per second videos. All right, now we're moving on to the group I like to call the movies, the Air 3, the Mavic 3 Classic, and the Mavic 3 Pro. I like to call them the movies because of their extremely high video quality, and I am not kidding around here. We'll start by taking a look at the DJI Air 3, the least expensive of the trio. Right off the bat, the Air 3 sets itself apart because it has two cameras instead of one, a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS wide angle camera and a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS 3 time zoom medium telephoto camera. The power of these bad boys lets you take 48 megapixel photos and 4K 60 frames per second HDR videos, or you can film in night mode at 4K 30 frames per second. The wide angle camera has an 82 degree field of view and an aperture of f1.7, and the telecamera has a field of view of 35 degrees and an aperture of f2.8. The wide angle camera can zoom in up to three times, whereas the medium telecamera zooms in up to nine times magnification. The Air 3 also offers 04 video transmission, weighs 720 grams, and has the farthest maximum flight distance at 32 kilometers. On to the Mavics, Classic and Pro. While they may be siblings and might have some things in common, such as their O3 Plus video transmission, these two are not twins. The Pro is a little bigger and heavier and has slightly less stamina with a flight time that's just a bit shorter and a maximum flight distance of 28 kilometers as opposed to the Classic's 30. Both drones feature top-of-the-line Hasselblad cameras, but the Pro has two other cameras, whereas the Classic only has the one. Both Hasselblad cameras have a 4 over 3 size sensor and 20 megapixels, but the Pro's also got a telecamera and medium telecamera with CMOS sensors of 1 over 2 and 1 over 1.3 inches respectively, and megapixels of 12 and 48 respectively. Because of this, as you can probably guess, the Pro can zoom in way more, up to 28 times magnification compared to the Classic's 3. There's also an almost $1,000 price difference between the two, so if you really want the exclusively pro features, just know you will be paying extra for them. All three movie drones featured 10-bit D-Log-M for color, a 6,000 meter max altitude, and an impressive wind resistance of 12 meters per second. Other features include 43 to 46 minute max flight time, eight gigs of storage, omnidirectional obstacle sensing, and easy to use intelligent features like focus tracking and waypoint which will let you plan flight routes and shooting actions in advance. 
The three are also compatible with the DJI Light Cut app and can be used to film vertically, which is great for filming specifically for social media. So whether you're an aspiring enthusiast looking to dip your toes into aerial photography or a seasoned professional seeking the ultimate tool for capturing stunning imagery, DJI's lineup of drones offers something for everyone. If you still aren't sure which drone would be best for you, just give one of our experts a call at the number below or visit us online or in store. Make sure to check out the links below to see our current pricing or take a look at our drone options for yourself. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.